Hey nerds, welcome to Jerry Berry X. Today we're going to recap season seven of The 100, the final season of The 100, meaning there's no reaction video today, tomorrow. In fact, there's not going to be an actual show reaction until August 15th uh, when season one, episode one of Stranger Things will go live. You guys will be able to watch everything there. Season one, episode one, and season seven, episode 16, the pilot and the last war of The 100 are free on Patreon. Links in the description box for that. If you're new to this, we recap the shows after we watch a season, for the big shows at least, some of the other ones not really, but um, it's finally over. It's, uh, it's finally over. It's a season that's plagued with horrible writing, a lot of bad decisions, a lot of unanswered questions, and just a lot of uh, laziness. I don't know. It's not, a, it's not a disaster, catastrophe on the lines of like the Game of Thrones final season or anything I've watched like that, but it's still pretty damn bad with a bunch of really cool concepts, a really bunch of really good ideas that if it had been fleshed out over the course of a season or two, could have worked out well. I don't think that the Prime situation should have bled over. I don't even really think the Shade Hater thing should have bled over. I get why it did. It kind of gives Indra more of a purpose, but we should have focused on the anomaly and this mystery, and I think it could have been really cool and really sad and really great if executed perfectly. We also go five, six, seven uh, plus episodes, whatever it was, episode two to episode, maybe almost 10 episodes without Bellamy. People thought he was dead. We knew he wasn't. Then we get poor writing with his character. And then the uh, from 13 on is a disaster. Uh, the final episode, I actually enjoyed the finale more than you would think. I liked it. I liked the last minute more than anything else. I thought I really liked the concept of it, but nonetheless, let's dive into it. So. Without further ado, let's recap Season 7 of The 100. So Season 7 uh, kind of starts with the ending of Season 6. They have Russell. They bring him in. Everybody wants, you know, death the primes. That whole situation's going on. There's the mystery about the anomaly. Remember the green thing sucked everybody up. Where'd Octavia go? What's going on? Nobody has any idea what's happening. So Clark says no more violence and then immediately causes violence when she sees her father's rings. We're wrapping up the, all the storylines. And... Basically wants to burn Russell at the stake, but she knocks him out so hard that Shade Hater goes in there and cuts Russell's throat. Bing, bam, bop. Whatever. Gabriel and company walk through the anomaly. We get flashbacks of the anomaly and how Octavia was there um, trying to leave while Dioza was content with her child. Dioza gives birth to a baby. She was there for six months and finally somebody showed her three months and then finally you know Octavia showed up even though they were seconds apart. Back in the present, Clark and Gaia bury Jake's ring and the flame respectively. And Russell's execution on the horizon. He weasels his way out while Raven sacrifices some of the Allegis four prisoners to save everyone from a nuclear meltdown. I was really hoping that the nuclear reactor would come back to be a, a weapon, an actual weapon in Sanctum. Never was. Back on Sky Ring, the homeless prisoner, a.k.a. Orlando, is revealed to be a level 12 and trains our people there as Clark and company discover more about the anomaly and travel to a frost planet. They walked into that fucking thing with no information. The only time you need a helmet is when you need a helmet, apparently, when the story calls for it. In episode five, we get a bunch of exposition about time traveling and Bardo as a planet with a with a tease that Bellamy might be dead. We all knew that he wasn't. As well, Shade Hata being discovered by Indra, which was a really bone-chilling moment that I really liked. Indra keeping them prisoner, or keeping him prisoner, learns that she has to take control to get some power to end Shade Hata, who was working some leverage throughout the whole episode. The planet Clark and them were uh, discovered is a living, breathing creature, whatever. They had to escape from. Uh, Gabriel turned on his friends to go to the surface. Lev was trying to work something out. The surface was only showed once. It was only lived once. You only got to see it once. Nobody ever goes to the surface. It was just a CGI shit show, and that's it. Even though the Queen's Gambit episode is really good. Criminals take over for all of our main characters. Wait. The criminals take over as all of our main characters have powerful and emotional reflections and meltdowns with them being peppered to be war prepared. <laughs> Put peppered to be warriors for the last war. And uh, Clark comes through the portal with the key there. With the key. She's the key. Bill is awoken. We learn the key's the flame, which we kind of figured. He thinks his daughter's in there. He never actually learns that his daughter was never in the flame. She was a flame keeper. She just watched over it. She was the first flame keeper. Um, in episode eight, Anaconda, one of the highest rated episodes of the entire show, a show many people in the comment section really seem to enjoy. One of the episodes... Probably my least favorite episode of the entire show right here is Anaconda. Backdoor pilot that undermines most interesting things about the Grounders. That's the only note I put. 
it would have been cool if it was the pilot, but it wasn't. And we learned that kaleidoscope kind of just wings everything and is, makes up this language on her own, uh, makes up this religion on her own, makes up a whole mythos on her own, and people just blindly follow it, which makes perfect sense. But it really takes away from the grounders, the, the thought process of a post-apocalyptic group of humans, right, banding together with augmentations of some sort that somehow got it from Becca Pramheda that has led them to seeing her as a god and explaining all this stuff. But instead, it's just a, a fan who cosplayed as her a couple of times. It was like, I'm going to make her a god in my own story, write some books for peeps. And people just went with it. Horrible. In episode nine, we see Octavia and company work their way up the ranks in Bardo, all then passing their test for Hope, who is sentenced back to Skyring for five years as Shade Hada takes over on Sanctum. After Indra kneels to Shade Hada after losing to him and Maddie taking out one of his eyeballs, Shade Hada has complete control of Sanctum, but back on Bardo, Echo tries to use the bioweapon to kill everyone. This leads to Hope killing Anders and Diosa sacrificing herself to save everyone. We see Bellamy is still alive because obviously he becomes one with the Shepherd and then betrays Clark immediately. He spends some time, he sees Transcendence, which ends up being real, so him being a fanatic actually makes sense in the end, um, and him believing into this, but completely betraying his friends is so out of character uh, for Bellamy. But then again, he kind of did it before for what he thinks is right. He's a very impressionable young man. The Eclipse, the Twin Sons, whatever the fuck makes a return, the Bugs attack, and Clark, who really needs a sketchbook, kills Bellamy over it and then leaves the sketchbook. They return to Earth, no one cares Bellamy's dead, and Maddie gives herself over after an attack by Shade Hada left Gabriel dead. Maddie gets turned into a veggie tail as Clark swears for revenge to stop the last war. Bill, with the code, goes to the end of everything, I guess, and starts to take the test, and is immediately killed by Clark, who immediately fails the test, leading to Raven and Octavia saving the day. The human race transcends everybody but Clark, who is left to suffer in purgatory on planet earth after she goes against Picasso, who for some reason Picasso didn't ascend. I don't understand that transcend, whatever the fuck. And then she comes back to earth. Lexa shows up. Hey, I'm a goosty ghoul. Uh, you will never join our ranks ever. Sorry. You're a piece of shit, but your friends want to be with you. They can't procreate when they die. It's the end of the human race. Congratulations. You're the only people left on earth. Have fun finding food. We transcended all the fish. I do agree that episode four should have been fleshed out a little bit longer, showing more of the training from Orlando to, for, to deepen their bond. Orlando is a heartbreaking character for me. I don't know why. That shit is fucking sad. Uh, Gabriel dying was something he really wanted, so that actually completes his arc. Bellamy dying makes no sense whatsoever. There's no way you can spin that to make sense to me. I'm okay with Bellamy dying. That's not a problem. Make it make sense, though. You want the sketchbook that badly? You, I mentioned in the finale... You could have lied. You could have walked up to him. Hey, I need that. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to give it to him. Trust me. You can come with me. Yada, yada. Something. Something. Anything. But instead, you shoot him dead. And then you don't get the sketchbook. And that leads to Maddie. And it leads to all this. So the whole human race leaving. And now it's just you and your friends. Granted, you don't have to fight no more until there's a civil war, internal conflict. And that's it. That's the show. Clark's always pulling levers. Pull the trigger. Pulling the trigger, boop. Killing Bellamy sets off a chain of events in which you, boop. You know, that leads to Maddie being tortured like you thought was going to happen. You killing Bellamy ends up leading to this. And then you pull the trigger on Bardo, or not Bardo, on um, Billy, William. And uh, congratulations, you don't get to transcend. You have to live on Earth, feel pain, suffrage. What if you get pneumonia? You're dead. No medicine. Jackson's there, but, you know, he's going to get old and his brain's going to get weak. Whatever. It's a fucking mess, okay? It's an absolute mess. With it being a mess, now that season seven's over, we're down 100 episodes from the 100. It's time to get into the final, well, second to last, Jer Awards for the 100. Let's kick things off with favorite episodes. We have four nominees out of the 16 episodes we had this season. Episode one, Sanctum. Episode four, Hesperides. Episode seven, The Queen's Gambit. Or episode 10, A Little Sacrifice. The Queen's Gambit is a really, really good episode. The reason the Queen's Gambit doesn't win, even though I love Shade Hata and I love him and Murphy's game, is because after this episode, the show declines rapidly. That back nine, golf pun intended, is not good television, and it's sloppily written with sprinkles of good stuff that could have been a lot better, and it breaks my heart to actually say that. And I hope if you did enjoy the show that you enjoyed it. Don't let mine or anybody else's opinion sway you from that. But for me personally, winner for favorite episode was season seven, episode one, Sanctum. It was really good. 
I really liked everything about it. Maybe because I, I really like season six, but still. For favorite scene, season seven, episode four, took four episodes to get one. Devin Hope's training montage. Orlando opening up to the group. In 7-5, Indra calling out Shade Hayda. In 7-6, Russell Hayda whipping Buddy's ass, uh, which ends up being Nelson, and then asking him to play chess. Indra's speech. In 7-7, seven, seven, the chess game between Murphy and Shade Hayda. In 7-10, Maddie cutting out Shade Hayda's eye. In 7-13, Indra killing the disciples. In 7-14, Indra talking to Octavia. In 7-16, Clark with her friends. My favorite scene throughout all of season seven was going to be Indra's speech, but it was short-lived and it really didn't serve a purpose in the grand scheme. Ends up being Indra killing the disciples, even though the chess game between Murphy and Shade Hayda was some top-tier shit. But Indra snapping in that moment, talking to Shade Hayda, stabbing Buddy, and then decapitation, fire. Most heartbreaking scene, season seven, episode three, Raven realizing what she had done in sacrificing those people because, you know, we had to flip Raven's character on its heels for no reason. In 7-4, Orlando watching his new friends and family kill his people and realizing they were leaving him. In 7-7, being told Orlando killed himself. In 7-7, Nelson embracing his mother and getting rejected by his father. In 7-11, Octavia, Clark, and Echo in the gas station, seeing Bellamy was still alive. In 7-14, Gabriel's death. In 7-15, Clark seeing Maddie as a vegetable. The saddest scene was Orlando watching his new family kill his people, the people he's been living with his whole life. He had, what, five years on penance? And we got to see 30 seconds of them together. That episode should have been fleshed out if they had more time to make more episodes. And we should have seen that connection grow and bond. And that would have been one of the most heartbreaking scenes of the entire show. I almost cried thinking about it during the episode. But now the episode's over. It just it holds little weight. And his death off screen is kind of also just depressing. So Funniest scene, there's only one. And that's season seven, episode three. Russell slash Shade Hayda eating that fucking cookie. My man really picked up a cookie and just went. It was hilarious. I don't know why. Favorite kiss. Season 7, Episode 7. Bellamy and Echo in the flashback on the Nuva Ring. Octavia and Levitt. I didn't put the episode number down. Neither did I did for John and Amori. But your winner and nominee from Season 7, Episode 14 was Miller and Jackson. Had to give it to him. Wasn't too many kissing going on. Another runner-up from the finale is, of course, Jordan and Echo. Oh, wait. Oh, God, no. Jordan and Hope. Jope. You're welcome. Favorite kill, 7-1, Shade Hayda killing Russell Prime. 7-3, the radiation killing James and Cora. 7-10, Hope slicing Andrew's throat. 7-13, Gabriel shooting the flame. 7-13, Indra cutting off the disciple's head. 716, Clark killing Bill Cadigan, or 716, Indra finally killing Shade Hayda. My favorite kill was by a landslide victory. Indra killing off the uh, killing the disciple but cutting his head off. Oh, it was so sick. But her story finally ending and killing Shade Hayda easily takes the cake for favorite kill for season seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Favorite quote, we only got two. Both from Indra. First was season season seven, episode one. Every battle plan is perfect until the first shot is fired. I will have to say before I say the winner, in the finale, Abby did drop a bar. I don't remember what it was. But our winner for favorite quote for season seven is season seven, episode 14, Indra to Octavia. We were all blood Reina. Fire. Favorite friendship. Nominate it, but not going to win. Default nomination that I put on this list was Clark and Bellamy. It's out the window. There was no friendship this season. Not by, not, not happening at all. No, 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 no. Gaia and Clark is nominated. I really like their friendship that was brewing. Gabriel, Hope and Echo is another nomination. Indra and Jonathan is another. And uh, I really couldn't think of any other people that were like, Becoming friends. I did like Hope and Luca. And no, uh, fuck, not Hope. Uh, Maddie and Luca, but Maddie kind of went to the wayside. Maddie and Picasso was like probably my second favorite friendship of the entire thing. But uh, I got to say, well, Picasso staying behind with Clark too is kind of like for Hope. That makes sense. Anyways, my favorite friendship 
actually ended up being Indra and Jonathan. Indra and Murphy. That dynamic, the way they worked with each other, it was great. There wasn't a whole lot of friendship going on here. But uh, kind of is what it is, right? Favorite ship. Now, obviously, when we talk about the the fan fiction ships, the non-canon ones, Balarque is always going to be there. Uh, but we're going to stick with the actual romances within the show. We have Octavia and Levitt, Murphy and Amori, Bellamy and Echo, or Miller and Jackson. Also, I didn't put their names down. I'm going to do it right now. It's going to be Jordan and Hope. We'll get their nomination. Not that it matters. But three Pete, like the Bulls, twice. Like the Lakers, almost twice. Three Pete, baby. For Murphy and Amori. Your season four. Well, oh, wow. They didn't win in season five. I forgot who won in season five. Season four, season six, and season seven winner. Back to back winner, at least. Murphy and Amori, favorite friendship or favorite relationship all the time on screen. Just beautiful, perfect. There was a relationship that got the most focus most of the time. Uh, I gave it to Becco in season five with Bellamy and Echo. Much deserved. Could have, uh, you know, it's like the relationship flew out the window this season. Didn't really matter to anybody. Great. Moving on. Let's start with most underrated character. I have one nominee. It's Levitt. Levitt won. Most underrated character. I feel like Levitt's going to go by the wayside. He does end up, he made the line, hey, I wish I would have got to live a little bit first. He gets to transcend. Transcending completely heals him and Amori and Echo. They all come back to Earth in tip-top, tippity-top shape. Levitt was clutch the entire time, other than trying to send him to the surface. But other than that, Levitt was the most clutch, the most underrated. He deserves love. Least favorite character? You got three nominees. Anders, Bill, Bellamy. Not Bill Belichick, Bill Bellamy. My least favorite character this season is the Riders. But I have to give you an actual character. I was going to go with Bill but he's kind of justified. Bellamy's kind of justified. Anders was just fucking annoying. Least favorite character, Anders. Book it. Book it, Danny. Favorite character. Now, you're, you're coming off of favorite character winner was Murphy in season six. And I'll go ahead and tell you your nominees for this season's Murphy, Indra, Gabriel, and Russell slash Shade Hata. I'm just going to put J.R. Bourne, actually. Those are my nominees for favorite character of this whole season. Gaio was spitting some bars, too, at one point. Murphy did win for season six, but in season seven, meaning we never had a repeat favorite character, I don't think, throughout the entire show. Favorite character for all of season seven is Mama Indra. Indra showed up, talked her shit. It's kind of the backbone of the season, to be honest. I think Indra deserves her love and respect, finally. She deserves it. She's been around since season one. Indra, phenomenal, phenomenal, perfect character. I love her to pieces. She deserves the W. You're all welcome. Now, let's get into season rankings and finale. Well, season names and finale names. We'll reveal everything uh, in the grand recap of the whole show. Season seven, we ended up naming Glorious Purpose. Glorious Purpose. Planet hopping with our main antagonist being Bill the Shepherd. For the finale, I named it uh, May We Meet Again. All about transcendence. I'm not going to lie to you. Seasons, I will give you spoilers for ranking. Season 7 is by far my least favorite season. Season 7 finale is not my least favorite finale. There's two finales I thought were worse. On that note, let's get into the in memoriam. You ready? In loving memory, rest in peace. Russell Prime, the invisible alien invaders. Dev, the other chess player. Space invader that was buried. James, Cora, Hutch, and X, Y, and Z. Tobin, the disciples that came through for Dev. The Disciples Hope killed to save Echo. The Disciples Echo killed. The Disciples Raven killed. Orlando, level 12. Multiple Disciples killed by Bellamy. New MCAP lab guy. More Disciple guards. Old man from the garden. Zahir, Nelson's dad. Lucy, Earth from the nukes. Becca Franco slash Becca Promheda in the flashback. Uh, Nightmare Hope. The Faithful of Sanctum killed by Shade Hada. Shade Hada's right eye. Anders, Dioza, Charlemagne Dioza, Nelson, I forgot his, his, his fucking real name, I didn't put a note down for it, Random Grounders Killed by Bugs, Knight, The Children of Gabriel, Disciples Killed by Indra, Doucette, The Flame, Bellamy Blake, Gabriel, All the Disciples Shedheda Killed, Maddie Griffin, Bill Cadigan, 
And, uh, well, I guess also a Maury and Jonathan, technically. But last but not least, the human race. Special shout out to Russell Prime, Orlando, Anders, Nelson, The Flame, Bellamy, Gabriel, Maddie, Bill, and the human race. May you all rest in peace. As we hit the outro, just remember, we're going to have a full show recap in the coming days, maybe a week or so. We're going to have trailers and bloopers throughout the week. We'll do character rankings. And we'll wrap all this up. In the final show showdown, we're not going to have a full season recap. We're not going to have every dead person, even though I, I could do it. We're going to have just the main ones, the final Jer Award, figure out my favorite episode for the for the, all of the show, favorite character, favorite everything. Put your money down on it. You may be wrong is all I'm saying. We'll give you full finale rankings and season rankings. And for now, remember, season seven episode or season one, episode one, the pilot, season seven, episode 16, the last war. All of those things will be in the description box down below, free on Patreon. A link to the Patreon as well for all 100 episodes will be there also. And on that note, guys, I am out for our final season recap. I will see you for the series recap for the rankings and everything in between. Links and everything will be in the description box down below. And playlists will be up on screen. As always, stay cute, stay hydrated, and I will catch you on the next one.